today is Friday of the 17th week of Ordinary Time. Last week, I was on retreat. I retreated. I ran away from all the usual extroverted requirements of my human life, and I lived in introverted splendor. This detachment from what swirls around me allowed me to take stock of who I am in relationship with the people and the events that make up the swirl. This taking stock is essential to my intellectual, emotional, and psychological well-being because the external swirl keeps pulling me away from my own well-being. Same for you. This pulling away is either a matter of being drained intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually because I'm investing in that which is around me, which is a good thing. Or it is a matter of those around me disparaging my engagement with them, which is not a good thing. In Jesus' case, in today's Gospel, the disparagement is people's minimizing who he is and who he has become. Is he not the carpenter's son? Meaning, isn't he just the carpenter's son? Someone we knew when he was just a little kid? Notice that this disparagement comes in the face of Jesus' demonstrated wisdom and mighty deeds. He demonstrates wisdom and mighty deeds, and the people around him conclude that he is uppity because he is only the carpenter's son. If his wisdom and mighty deeds are exactly that, then why won't they credit him with wisdom and mighty deeds? Probably the best we can say is that that's how people are, often ready to see the worst, ready to cut our accomplishments down to a size that matches their reductionist image of things, and ready to take the low road. And by taking this attitude, they prevent Jesus from being helpful to them. He did not work many mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. How sad for them to miss out on wisdom and mighty deeds. How discouraging for Jesus. And how discouraging for us to have to live that way too. This is why we all need to take some time away to unplug from the swirl around us and be back in touch with our authentic selves and with God who is always at our very center. This is why Jesus went up onto the mountain to pray every night. Every night! And sometimes he would take his disciples away to a distant place to be alone in their group and to rest. And that's what my retreat did for me. Though it did one more thing too. It helped me see that there is an emotional swirl going on inside me too. Not just outside, but inside too. The hurts and aggravations of the past, the anxieties about the present and the future. And in the midst of it, God speaks. In this case, pointing out to me how much good there is in my life and how much good there has been. Why don't you focus on the good, past and present, rather than the bad? Jesus asked me. Well, it's a good question. If I can focus interiorly on the good, God can enrich the goodness and give me the strength to resolve my internal swirl and engage the external swirl. So here I am, back at it. This particular corner of the swirl is this little park, surrounded by what is still pretty minimal traffic at the intersection of New Hampshire Avenue and M Street. It's great to be out and about again, but only because I just spent a week away and I'm now ready to re-engage with the wisdom 
and mighty deeds that Jesus wants to do through me and through you, of course. So even if you can't get away just now, please take a little time today to unplug, ask Jesus for wisdom and peace and strength so you can re-engage and do mighty deeds through him for our suffering world.